In this video, I'm going to show you how to upload a file to the Zenodo community for work on Australian languages. I'm at this page right now, zenodo.org slash communities slash Australian languages, all one word, you can ignore the bit at the end. And um, on the community page, there's, uh, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can click on the upload button here. So, so this is a new upload. First thing we have to do is choose the files. Um, you can drag and drop files from the desktop or you can click this which will open the file uh, list which will take you to where you can find the file you need. I'm just going to drag a file over here. And uh, this is a PDF file. Uh, you can upload lots of different types of files. Uh, and then I'm going to start the upload and that's going to upload it to the to the server. Okay, so now I have a link. The file is on the Zenodo server, but I still need to add a lot of information about it. One of the nice things about Zenodo is that it displays a lot of diff different information about the file so people can find it easily. This happens to be a, uh, a presentation, a handout of a paper I gave back in 2006 on different types of tense marking in Northeast Arnhem Land. And uh, I still haven't got around to writing up the paper, but this is the, uh, the handout that it's based on, so I'm going to put that up on, on Zenodo. Uh, I'm going to take it over to one side so I can see the information that I need to fill in. Uh, so this was a presentation. It's not a publication. It's not a poster. Uh, it's a, a presentation, a conference handout, or slides. Uh, you can also include data sets, uh, Excel spreadsheets, for example, or tab separated files, comma separated files, other types of, of data. You can include images, uh, photos, for example, video or audio, software, or um, lessons. So this is a presentation. Right, next is basic identification or basic information. This, uh, there's a, a couple of things, not all of these are required. There's a red star next to it if you need to put something in there, but um, for example for the DOI, the digital object identifier, you don't need to, to have anything. This is for papers that are already published elsewhere. Sometimes when uh, you publish a paper with a journal they will uh, create an online version and uh, the online version will have a digital object identifier that um, uh, you can enter into a search term and then uh, and then find. So even if the publisher's website changes, if the web address changes, the the DOI will still find it. Uh, in this case, we don't have a DOI, so we'll just leave it uh, leave it blank. The publication date was January the fifth, two thousand and six. So I'm going to add that. Uh, what was it? Oh five. Okay, so it's the year, then the month, then the date. And the title was Tense Categorization in Northeast Arnhem Land. The author was just me, family name first, and my affiliation is uh, Yale University. Now we need to add a description. Um, this can be the uh, can be pretty much anything you like. I'm just going to write a uh, handout for a talk given at the Linguistic uh, Society of Americas annual conference on January 2006. Um, paper concerns the way in which different Yolngu languages, particularly Yolngu, um, uh, mark different tense distinctions. Okay, then for keywords, you can add ways that um, search terms that people might use to to find your paper. So I'm going to use uh, linguistics and add another keyword. Australian languages. Yungo. Family name T. 
tent. Cyclic tents. Historical linguistics. Okay, I don't have any additional notes right now. Next, I need to figure out what type of license and what sort of access rights. There are four types of access rights we can uh, include and a couple of different types of licenses. Um, open access is the default. Um, that means that anyone can have access to the uh, to the handout and they can download it and uh, and so on. Embargoed access means that they can eventually have full access, but not yet. So it could be embargoed for a period of days, months, years. Um, so for example, say I wanted to upload my PhD thesis, um, say I'm a graduate student uploading my PhD, but I don't want to upload it until I've defended it, then I might embargo the access until after my defense. Uh, say that I'm uploading a paper that's going to be published, um, or I'm uploading the data set for a paper that's going to be published, but I don't want the data to be available before the uh, the paper is published, then um, I might embargo the paper for, for a couple of weeks here. Um, that's uh, The next is restricted access. Uh, these are files that can be uh, accessed under certain circumstances. So it says spe specify the conditions under which you grant users access to the files in your upload user requesting access will be asked to justify how they fulfill the condition. And then you can decide who to grant or deny access to. Okay, um, you can't charge users, so you can't charge any money for, uh, for data hosted on Zenodo. But you could, for example, say that the conditions are only people who um, uh, promise to respect cultural protocol should uh, have access to these, these uh, uh, recordings or, or results. So as part of um, so as part of getting access to the, the data that you upload or to the um, materials that you upload, the users have to specify that they have to agree to, uh, to respecting protocol. And the last sort is closed access. So these are files that are uploaded for safekeeping, but no one can access them except you. Uh, I don't recommend this for the community because part of the point of having a community like the Australian Languages community is so that we can share our work with, uh, with other people. Um, so, so I recommend one of the uh, the uh, the other three types of access, particularly open access. This one's going to be the the one that I'm uh, going to upload the tense categorization handout. I'm going to make open access. Uh, then we have a number of different Creative Commons licenses. Um, Creative Commons licenses are a way of uh, preserving uh, copyright and uh, uh, a way of uh, asserting ownership of materials without uh, having to design new licenses and new copyright pro protocols each uh, each time. Um, the one I typically use is a non-commercial no derivatives license which means that people can download, they can read, they can quote from my work but they can't republish it and they can't use it for commercial use. So I'm going to use that one. Next we can Use. Uh, we want to specify the communities that we're going to uh, put the uh, put the data in. I'll uh, put the the handout in. Um, anyone can create a new community. Uh, I want to use the existing community because I think it's more. Uh, it's going to be easier for people to find work on a on a particular community. So it's going to go to work on languages of Australia. Uh, this material was funded by. Oh, then I'm going to work on to to the funding agencies. Uh, these are uh, funding agencies for, um, uh, they have a number of different um, uh, grant organizations in Europe. They don't yet have, I don't think they yet have the Australian Research Council. Um, no, but they will have uh, the ARC pretty, uh, pretty soon. Uh, and you can see the list of uh, of people they uh, they they currently list of grants they currently recognise. Don't think they have the ELVP. Uh, no, so so I'm not going to to add that. Although I could add that in the additional information or additional notes um, above. Very shortly they will have um, ARC um, and um, NSF grants re represented. In which case, adding the grant organisation and number means that uh, the Zenodo website will automatically 
uh, report the the grant to, uh, the the publication to the NSF. So when you're compiling annual reports, for example, you won't need to uh, add all that information separately. Okay, then we have a number of other fields that are optional. Um, this one is recommended, the others are optional, so we'll just go through these and say what they, they are. These are related publications and data sets. So for example, say you published a paper in Linguistic Typology or the Australian Journal of Linguistics and you wanted to upload the data that the paper was based on and um, uh, and reference that paper. And that paper has a DOI, but uh, but this uh, this data source was not published along with the with the paper. You could give a related identifier here, and uh, that way the uh, that way people who have this uh, who have the Zenodo site open would be able to find the paper that um, that the data references. Okay, you can also include uh, URLs, websites, and um, uh, and so on. ISBN numbers if there's a book that uh, that relates to the data. Um, okay, then we have contributors. Um, this is a more flexible way of showing authorship. So for example, say there's, um, uh, say you have authors of the, the paper you're uploading, but there are other contributors associated with the, uh, with the material. Um, you can add those, those names there. Uh, you can give uh, references if you want to um, cite particular, particular references associated with the, um, uh, with the paper. Uh, if it was published in a journal, you can give the uh, the journal title, volume, issues, and uh, and pages. In this case, this paper wasn't published, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, here's the conference. The conference title was the um, annual inter meeting of the Linguistic Society of America. Uh, acronym was LSA 2006. Uh, dates. I'll just put 2006. Um, I do not remember where the LSA was held in 2006, so I won't be including uh, including that information. Uh, if there was a website, then we could include that. And if I had the session information, then I could include that as well. Um, then you can also include information about uh, if it's a, a book or a report or chapter uh, within a book, you can include information about the, the book it comes from. Uh, if it's uh, a thesis, you can say which university it came from, and if you want to include um, subjects, then we can include that. Okay, then we have to save all of that information, and now that everything's been saved, now it's possible to publish it. So you might not want to publish things immediately, you might want to uh, enter part of the information and then come back to it later once something's been checked. In this case, uh, I don't have any more information that I'm going to add, so uh, I can just uh, I can just publish it. If uh, the publishing button isn't uh, activated, if uh, if you can't click on it, then that means that you haven't saved the uh, the items uh, beforehand. You can't upload you can't publish before you've uploaded the file and before you've saved all the information. Uh, so you can see this was saved successfully. I get this green bar at the top. Now I'm going to publish it. And now it says published successfully, and now it takes me to the site for the record. Um, and you can see that all the information's there. You can see it's a presentation, it's open access, uh, it's uh, you can see the title and the the author, and you can see the actual PDF of the file. You can see my keywords, uh, the meeting. You can see the community it comes from, and then if we click on that community, you can see there's now uh, it now appears in that community as um, as well.